So I woke up this morning and realized that Trench turned five today. Does that make us old? I feel like it does, and I really hate that. It's crazy how much time flies and how we change as people over time. I already made a reflection on that on my three year anniversary Trench video, but today I really just wanted to celebrate Trench and what makes it spectacular. So we're gonna listen to the album together and just highlight what parts just make this so iconic. Like what makes Trench unique from other albums? Why is it celebrated as such a great mature step for the band? And ultimately why we hope the final album in the Dima storyline lines up with Trench sonically, like why we want it to sound like Trench. I want to break that down in this video when we react to this album. I'm going to put the timestamps in the video just so you can skip around to your favorite track and see what I had to say on it. And for whatever reason, if I missed your favorite attribute to that song, throw it in the comments. I'm going to be reading over everything and just nostalgia jumping as well. Headphones are going on, cracking open my Celsius. Track one, we all know it, we all love it, Jumpsuit, and we're playing it now. I love this opening synth. It sets the scene so well. It's like an escape sound for someone who made it out of Dima. They're blaring it in their city, basically proclaiming, you know, someone is escaped, someone is out. And in the case of the music video, it's Tyler. Tyler made it out. Oh, that guitar riff is so good. I love this break so much. It's so cool hearing like this more introspective side. And I love this production cue right there where he says cover me and it's echoed. That sounds so cool, those echo effects. You all know that I, this is my favorite part of the song. I mean, the screaming is great too, but I love this part where it gets so silent. The production is incredible. It gives us a time to breathe right before the screaming outbreak. Yep. Still hits, still hits. Five years later, so good. I feel like every 21 Pilots fan like deserves to see this live as well. It's phenomenal. I'm getting chills. I get chills just thinking of like the two times I've seen that live. It is incredible. Oh my gosh. And that leads us right into Levitate. Uh, just such a cool flow, basically an extension of Jumpsuit, a war further warning signal about this album, what we're getting into, warning us about the universe of Dima and Trench. And if you haven't watched JL Anderson's metal cover of Levitate yet, please watch it. I'll link it down below as well. Such a cool cover. The flow is just so good and Tyler hasn't done something like this since. Granted, there's only been one album since uh, Trench, but I really want more rap like this on the final album of the Dima storyline. Give it to me, Tyler, please. This is my favorite part of the song right here. I just, something about the layered vocal effects, so cool. And that reference of Car Radio, obviously iconic, but I just had to highlight it as my favorite part of Levitate. The self-referencing stuff in here is so cool. And again, it just takes itself seriously. The vibe is atmospheric, the vibe is dark, these whistling bird call effects in the background, communicating that the vultures are circling, watching the banditos and their every move. Morph time, I have a confession. The leaks came out about a week before Trench came out. Everyone was listening to them. I held fast, but two days before the album dropped, I listened to one song out of the leaks to hold myself back from the rest of the album that was in my Dropbox. And Morph was the song that I selected. I listened to Morph early, but it's so good. And it's my favorite song off of Trench. That intro, those intro chords and notes are so iconic. When I think of Trench, I think of this song and the story that it tells. Again, this song is detailing the bishops, what they're all about, Nico, Nicholas Borbaki. This is Nico's song off of the album. I mean, there's Nico and the Niners for sure, but I feel like this really encapsulates the, the characteristics of Nico. Ah, I love this part so much. It's so vibey, it's so atmospheric. It's dark, the production is prime. God, I love that too. Like I said that in my very first reaction of Trench, but how it trails off saying, I'm just a ghost as his vocals are trailing, communicates visually like he is like haunting the track in a way with his vocals. His vocals are trailing off like a ghost's would. So genius. And these piano notes, oh my gosh. The most atmospheric thing on the album, I feel like. These little piano chords, we see some in Chlorine as well, but this gives that song just that much umph and gives it so much flavor and personality, so much to chew on. Honestly, whenever the leaves start to change color and it starts to transition to fall, I put on this song because it gives me the most nostalgia of this part of my life when Trench came out. I was finishing college and this drum pattern, this drum line at the very end where Josh Dunn is going hard. Can you tell I love this song? <laughs> 
My Blood also leaked early, a couple days before the actual music video, like lyric video came out. Um, we all listened to it, but I still think that the intro of this song is so ingrained into my brain. Good Lord, this is bringing me back. I remember feeling like this song was like very simple when it first came out, but as I've listened to it hundreds of times by this point, it is so multi-layered. Like the production, again, there are so many things going on in the background with his vocals, with the drums, with the synth. The chorus kicks in. It's a vibe, it's a vibe, it's a vibe. This is definitely a spooky song, definitely like a Halloween song. I know some might disagree with me, but like watch their live visuals when they play the song live. There's skeletons walking around, there are spiders, it's crazy. And of course the music video is a Halloween party. You can't tell me this is not a Halloween song. It's my personal Halloween anthem. And of course, this part is so good. Just the echoing vocals and the synth. Definitely sounds like a 70s, 80s disco-esque influence. It just, it, they give it their all with the song. I mean, they give it their all with every song, but it's just like layer after layer after layer of a new instrument, new effect, new synth, new vocal pattern. Oh man. And of course, Josh Dunn finishing the song on the drums. If it gets my body moving, I mean, it's a good song. Come on, come on. Then we got Chlorine. This one is a banger and a half. Every time, every time is so good. And again, those piano effects. Why do I feel like that's a Paul Meany thing? He just adds these little sprinkles of piano here and there. He's like, here, a little bit of this, a little bit of that. It just adds such a cool fingerprint to the song. It gives it so much identity. This song, this rap. I love that rap. I, uh, one of the top moments on the album for me. Guys, this, God, we're only five tracks in. And of course the outro, which to me is my favorite part of the song. Um, I freaking love the outro. Listen to this. He's like crying out from the pit of his soul. Basically like the loneliness of this sequence, the loneliness of this feeling. It's a cry of desperation. And it's so evident in the way that this song is laid out, this this outro is laid out. Smithereens, which is Jail Anderson's favorite song off of Trench. It's definitely one of mine as well. I think it's slept on. It's kind of like the formidable of Scales and Icy. I mean, obviously it's about Jenna. I remember during my first reaction, like I had a very strong reaction to this song. I loved this song. And it's just a cute little like icing on the cake for the track list. Like these little flute noises, just again, perfectly nailed that cute vibe that they're going for in this song. I never saw the song live. They didn't play it during my leg of the Bandito tour, but I wish I did because this part is so good. It brings the euphoria straight from my brain. It reaches right into the top of my skull, finds that joy and just pulls it out to the surface. Oh man, oh, so good. Neon Gravestones, it's crazy to hear like after the album came out, how much the label pushed back against this song and how Tyler like really fought for it and advocated for it. Like it wasn't supposed to be in the final album, but he really fought for this, this work. And it's clear too, because this whole album hinges on this song. It has to dive deep into why Dima is bad and why the bishops are bad. I think this song is just so powerful and so beautiful. It's bone chilling, but it has like a hopeful note to it, which is what I like like this part of the album sounds hopeful to me. That screech in the background, which kind of kind of calls back to that vulture cry and levitate, kind of draws together the visuals in my mind. Because again, the vultures are what the bishops use to peer into the lives of the banditos. They can possess dead vultures. And so having those dead vulture cries in the background of this song, I, at least that's how I picture it, it's so haunting. Like that's the best way to, that I can put it. It's haunting. Find your grandparents or someone of age, pay some respects for the path that they paved to life they were dedicated. Now that should be celebrated. Yeah, I just got chills up my spine. So the hype, the hype is interesting. I have a love dislike relationship with it. Um, it definitely is probably my least favorite on the album, but also becomes like top five every couple months. I like listen to it 
and I just appreciate the ending of it. Speaking of the ending, I mean, that's my favorite part, so we're just gonna go ahead and skip to that. See, like, this is good. This is solid. This is so good. It brings a smile to my face. Just hearing the uke, the strings. Oh my gosh, like, this is the most euphoric part of Trench. This is like the most joyful part of Trench. And I love it. It just gives us that little bit of glimmer of hope before diving into the rest of the album because the rest of the album is pretty, pretty somber. That brings us to Nico and the Niners. Um, first off, what a banger. Um, this definitely was underappreciated when it came out alongside Jumpsuit. I feel like it was definitely overshadowed by Jumpsuit, but I love this song. I love this song. It is so vibey and once again just perfectly encapsulates like the vibe of trench it's so good at communicating the vibe of the world and that's why it came out alongside jumpsuit jumpsuit obviously is a great intro it's a great introduction to the album but this sets the tone i mean don't get me wrong i definitely slept on this song too at launch but as time has moved on it's become one of my favorites i'd say top five but then again i say that about every song so i don't really know my true ranking and i would rather die than list a ranking of my top 21 pilot songs because that would be worse than death i would say this freaking rap this freaking rap is so good short sweet simple but effective <laughs> What am I doing? I, I literally couldn't imagine this album without this song. I, it's probably the, the same and true with like every single song on this album, but I literally could not picture this album without this song. Okay, that part there. Is he saying, so did they buy you? Or did, so did they bury you? Is that, is that listed in the lyrics? Cut my lip, one of the most vibey songs. I mean, this, this has to be the most atmospheric song on this album. It takes its time, it's slow, it's a slow burn. I feel very similarly about it that I do with the hype, which is like the first half is like a little slow, but then the end just picks up and redeems the whole song. Listen to that like escalating chorus and then the, the it goes back down, just, it, it ascends and then it descends. This part with the, the vocaled, the layered vocaled, the echoing effects, the ascending and descending notes, the reggae influences coming into full effect, and the little drumming effects that Josh has in the background, the hi-hats, it's just so good with the bass line. Yeah, it all comes together in this like really sweet finale. Okay, Bandito, in my opinion, is the sweetest song on this album. I know I kind of said that about Smithereens, but this song, like, I love I love the instrumentals. And what's really cool about Bandito that I didn't realize until like a year after Trench came out is that this song must have been made in tandem with Jumpsuit because there is so much common DNA between Jumpsuit and Bandito. You might be calling me crazy at this point, but there is a mashup out there on YouTube between the two songs and they perfectly weave together. And it's great because Jumpsuit and Bandito are like, I kind of view them as sister tracks. They have very similar themes and they both are talking about the banditos and fleeing from Dima and calling for help. This part just speaks for itself. The backwards piano, freaking genius. He's talking about like wanting to take the high road or the low road. And it's cool how the instrumentals reflect that with the high pitch vocals, the low pitch vocals. The instrumentation, gosh, it's genius. This album's freaking genius, y'all. I wanna see this live again. I know they'll probably never bring it back, which is so sad, but I wanna see this live again. They had all those like little needle lights come down and surround the stage. It was so cool. At this point in the song, I was just jamming in the pit. I was jumping up and down. I was treating it like it was like a disco party, whatever. It's a highly emotional song, but I can I can get down to this song. <laughs> Again, this part just speaks for itself. Wow, that just gave me so much life. <laughs> it's been a weird season of life right now, but that, that song just like amped me the frick up. Speaking of amping up, oh my gosh, this song I almost completely forgot about. It's that weird song. They just get these ideas out there and they don't turn back. That sheet is freaking bonkers. And of course this part, this part is so good. 
Yeah, it's weird. This song is weird. It has a lot of weird ideas for sure. But then you get to this part. And it's just such a mood. It's such a vibe. I remember watching Hannah Bright's reaction to this song and her going like freaking mental. Like this is everyone's reaction. Like, okay, we're doing this. We're doing this. This song is so cool. This song is so cool. This song is so freaking wild. <laughs> And then this song, just a second to last wholesome entry of this album. I love the story behind it. And it's just such a great like honorary track to our loved ones that are no longer with us. All right. my name, my That's cute. That's cute. And then this outro. Uh, Josh Jun on those freaking trumpets, man. He knows what he's doing. Then we have this one which I'm still not recovered from. Oh, even those first two words, every time is like a knife into my stomach. Like I'm tired. And then it just reminds me of this whole song and it makes me sad. I proposed this idea in my Instagram story a little bit ago, but I was like, it would be so cool if the finale of this next upcoming album is like part two of Leave the City. Like it, it you know how Leave the City like never reached its climax you know what i mean it never reached its full crescendo or potential what if the finale of the next album resumed and used the same motifs and instrumentation and like did bring it to its conclusion part two would be like goner you know what i mean like the end of goner that'd be like the finale of the next album it'd be like this explosive conclusion to the song i'm throwing this theory out there but like what if the finale of this next album flows into heavy dirty soul you know what i mean like it literally flows into heavy dirty soul communicating this is a cycle that'd be freaking sick i'm calling it what they better do that they better they better do that but this part is still so good he's singing but it sounds hollow like he sounds hollow he sounds like almost soulless like he's just he's just tired he's done He's worn out, he's running on fumes. And of course there's the deep pitched vocal track layering as well, communicating that the bishops are with him right now, bringing him down back into exhaustion of like accepting where he's at. And what's sad about the song is like, he doesn't leave the city. Like he literally, the song is called Leave the City, but he very clearly says that he's not leaving right now. He's just trying to stay alive. That's crazy. I actually don't even think I ever like thought that deeply about that. Kind of accepting defeat in the final track of this song, which is actually wild. And then of course, Scaled and Icy, he doesn't leave the city and then he's captured by the bishops and then he's forced to create Scaled and Icy, literally a sequel to this song. And then this part just gives me chills every time. He's talking about us watching him play in concert, all these faces looking at him, watching him and they all feel the same way. And they, in turn, give him the strength to keep going. What I mean. Once again, I'm left speechless. Every time I listen to the album all the way through, I'm just like wrecked. <laughs> oh my gosh. It's, it's a masterpiece. It's a masterclass of atmosphere, songwriting, storytelling, vocal delivery. I mean, it's just like such a cool encapsulated snippet of this world. And it, it feels like the world continues on outside of this music, if that makes sense. That's the cool part. That's really, really cool. It's crazy. Like this, this album came out, I was a senior in college. I was just wrapping up my final year and I'm now 28 years old. I'm married. And this album just brings me right back to that place. And um, I hope it does the same for you guys. And I think that's just a, a special feeling that music can do that to us. Just like senses, like your smell and your taste, like it just, it brings you back to that place. So anyway, guys, I'll end this here, but thank you so much for watching. If I missed your favorite part of a song, let me know down below what that part is and say why it's your favorite part. I mean, I wanna hear from you guys about why you love this album so much and your hopes for the next album. 
finalizing the Dima storyline. As always, call someone today, whether it's a friend or a family member, you may be saving their life. This has been Jake with Stolen Potential, and I will see you when I see you.